Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'll be going over combination sum, and in this problem you're given an array of candidates, and you're supposed to find which combination of candidates adds up to a given target. And the thing to keep in mind about this question is that you can use the same number of inside candidates multiple times. So, for instance, you can choose the number 2 multiple times. The method I'm going to be going over today is recursive backtracking. And in this method, we're going to use recursion and depth first search to go over every single candidate combination that adds up to the target seven. So to start off, we just have, we're going to have a recursive call and we start with the current solution being empty. And in this current solution, we want to start appending candidates to, to this array. So to start off with, our current solution is empty, and our target is equal to 7. Now we want to start appending to our current solution. So we have four possible paths from this point. We can either append 2, 3, 6, or 7. So let's just write that out here. We're going to have... And now in this case, the target would become five because since we've added the two, we have to subtract that two from the target value. So our new target becomes five. And then you're also gonna have another branch. With the current solution three and the target of four. And then you're gonna have two more branches with the six and the seven. So now I'm going to continue on from this point and from here you can still add a 2 and have it be have the target still be positive so we're going to call the first search and we're going to append another 2 to the solution and then target will be 3 now because you subtract that to 5 and now we're gonna do this method again. And the target will be equal one. And then now if we try to call this step first search again, you'll find out that the target is in fact negative one, which is not what we want. So then we know this path is not going to produce any solutions. So then we backtrack. So now we backtrack up to this point here. And then we call step first search and we add our second element, which is three. And now our target is equal to zero. That means that all these numbers in this array adds up to the target and we have a solution here. And we keep continuing on with this step first search recursion method for all the other branches. And then we're eventually gonna be left with two, two, three, and seven as our output. I'm going to go over the code and what we see here is this step first search backtrack function and our base case is checking to see if target is equal to zero and if it is you append it to your answer so we have this answer right here and we call this step first search function and whenever we find an answer we append to it and what you'll notice here is we don't actually return here because we can have zeros as our elements so then those zeros can actually be appended to the current solution when the target is zero, and then you can have more solutions. So that's the reason why we don't have a return here. And this next case is when the target is less than zero, we return, we backtrack, we've exhausted all our possible solutions. Now we get to this for loop here and we have i in range start i to the length of candidates. So what this will do is loop through every single candidate and 
we have the start eye here because we eventually want to shrink our array that we're looking at to be just three, six, seven, six, seven, and then seven. So that's why we have the start eye here um, for our deeper branches or our branches farther to, to the right hand side of the tree. We're going to eliminate the two, then eliminate the three, then eliminate the six until we're just left with the seven. So we need to start I because we're shrinking the candidates array once we get farther to the right hand side of the tree. And then we have in this for loop is where we actually call the depth first search recursive function. And its first parameter is target minus candidates I. And the reason why is because you want to, once you select an item, you want to minus that from the target. And then that whatever that value is becomes a new target. And then the current solution you would add the current candidates elements to the current solution and then the start i just becomes whatever i you're on and we start with the target being just whatever input target you get our current solution being empty that makes sense and our start i is just zero because we want to start at the first index and then afterwards we would just return our answer and if this doesn't make sense to you now, then I would encourage you to just draw out, out this tree and just draw out every single branch and then just to see how the code works and how the code backtracks and it will start to make sense to you. So in terms of time complexity, the runtime is n to the power of m, where n is the number of elements in the array and m is the length of the longest possible combination. There is an alternative dynamic programming solution and the code is here if you want to look through it. It's not as straightforward, it's a lot more complex, but it is definitely a lot more efficient. The reason why I'm not going to go into it is in a coding interview, you're probably not going to have the time to explain and come up with a dynamic programming solution that's this complex. And if you do, kudos to you, but it's just a lot harder to explain to your interviewer and I don't actually recommend a dynamic programming answer for this combination sum problem. And that brings us to the end of this video. If this video helped you out then be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.